This is Field Sports Channel News. Gamekeepers are baffled that someone has apparently dumped five goshawks in Suffolk. Few gamekeepers see that many goshawks in a year, though bird flu has been killing numbers of buzzards this winter and may be killing other raptors too. The shot that shows up in the x-rays released by police is harder to explain. In a tweet, Suffolk Police blames the shooting community for the deaths. They say the birds were found next to a car park near Bury St Edmunds, though they do not reveal who found them. A police spokesperson says that all the birds were x-rayed, but doesn't say who x-rayed them. All the birds appear to contain shot, but police cannot explain why one of them is labelled parrot. An independent review has found that antis regularly submit heavily edited footage to police as evidence of illegal hunting. Labour's North Wales Police and Crime Commissioner Andy Dunbobbin commissioned the report from Wrexham Glendower University. It vindicates concerns expressed by pro-hunting groups such as the Countryside Alliance, who suspect SABs waste police times with fraudulent video footage. The report corroborates the evidence of police officers in North Wales who say hunt saboteurs often provided them with footage which is often edited or grainy, long distance and of no evidential value. Hunt prosecutions often depend on evidence obtained by anti-hunt activists, such as the League Against Cruel Sports, according to a barrister-led review of the issue in 2014. The resources handed over to North Wales Police out of the public purse need to focus on real crime, looking after the vulnerable people and children, which has come out in this report. And it is time for the Police Crime Commissioner to take note of the report that he commissioned and to move forward with policing in North Wales in a proper manner and to look after our residents and to take those to task who continue to present the police force with fraudulent, heavily edited evidence. The Clay Pigeon Shooting Association is thinking of changing its name. The CPSA is consulting members on whether to drop the word pigeon in favour of the word target. It says that the change could help modernise the sport's brand image in order to help attract new shooters, members and sponsors from outside the sport. You can take part in the consultation, link below. John Muir Trust has been a staunch supporter of Scottish land reform, but now a group of crofters is considering taking over John Muir Trust land. The Trust obtained a licence for a mass slaughter of deer out of season and at night on its Quinega estate in Sutherland. Outraged crofters who own the estate next door following a taxpayer-backed buyout in 1993 are reacting angrily to the loss of the deer. Their business model, approved by the Scottish Government, relies on hunting tourism. They plan to use Scotland's land reform legislation to remove the trust from its ground. A Westminster Government minister has committed to taking a balanced approach and keeping an open mind over snares. A petition of more than 100,000 signatures triggered a parliamentary debate on the subject. Speaking in Westminster Hall, not the main chamber of the House of Commons, DEFRA Minister Trudy Harrison said the government's stance on snares in England needs to be looked at, but she didn't commit to further laws. DUP MP Jim Shannon and the chairman of the EFRA Select Committee, Sir Robert Goodwill, have highlighted the importance of snares, which they call humane cable restraints. Mr Shannon says snares protect birds such as curlew and lapwing from predators. He told the committee how the manufacture, sale and use of snares in the UK are already subject to legislation and various codes of practice. Snares are really important because at certain times of the year and in certain locations they are the only method that will work. So if we think about the spring when the cover is high, we have birds nesting on the ground at the most vulnerable, that's one of the times when snares are really needed. What we need to do, we need to use the most modern snare design, humane cable restraints, in accordance with the relevant government codes of practice to ensure that we can continue to use these important devices. The Scottish Hunting with Dogs Bill is in its final stages. The Scottish Countryside Alliance is meeting with Environment Minister Mari McCallum and Nature Scots Licensing Office to lobby for amendments that would protect the use of dogs in predator control. The bill that further restricts hunting with hounds is in its third stage. The SCA fears that if the government doesn't listen and agree to changes, rough shooting will become a criminal offence because of the change in the use of dogs. It also warns that the Greens and Labour may introduce last-minute wrecking amendments, which may make it even more difficult to use dogs to catch predators. A postal worker has sparked anger on Twitter after posting an image of a door with hanging pheasants next to it. Cathy Hodgson took to Twitter to complain about the BBC TV show Countryfile, featuring shooting. 
The Green Party member wrote, hashtag countryfile, what on earth were you thinking? In her tweet, she said, I have to deliver post to this mailbox at this time of year. There are rarely less than six pheasants hanging around it, which she called archaic. The Twitter sphere soon replied. One tweet said, it is not impeding anything, and as for birds being hung, there is no better sight in shooting. A one-eyed seal in an Essex reservoir is eating up all the fish. It swam into the Marks Hall Fisheries Lake and is evading capture. The lake has been forced to close and it is estimated the visitor has eaten £3,000 worth of fish. It's also believed to be eating local ducks. Nick North leases the lake from Rochford District Council and is losing £500 a day in tickets for fishing. I've been told now that I'm not allowed to attempt any more nettings or anything like that to try and catch it as it's a protected species. Oh, there he goes, look, just getting out of the water, had another nice meal, was on Paradise Island. The chairman of the Masters of Foxhounds Association, Andrew Osborne, is rowing across the Atlantic Ocean in memory of his daughter, Amy. She died unexpectedly five years ago, aged 25, from an undiagnosed heart condition. The former master and huntsman of the Cottesmore Hunt is rowing a boat called In Full Cry. The trip, which started in the Canary Islands, will take around 90 days. Andrew will sail around 3,000 miles before he reaches his destination in Antigua. He is raising money for the charity his family set up, Cardiac Risk in the Young, or CRY. Link below. And finally, a bear has attacked a Swedish gamekeeper out checking a feeder. Johan Johansson was looking at the feeder in a wood in Uppsala County when a bear stood up on two legs behind him. The animal attacked and bit the former UN soldier badly on the right hand. The 52-year-old went to hospital where he told a local newspaper how at first he thought it was a wild boar that came out of the forest. He heard it roaring. When he turned round, he came face to face with the bear. His plucky dog, called Gordon, barked and chased the bear back into the forest. Gordon is a Gontzi Polski, or Polish hunting dog, well known as a breed that is not afraid of anything. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.